The May 1976 issue of QST magazine had an article by Doug DeMaw, W2CER, that described a simple two-transistor low-power 350 milliwatt CW transmitter that could be built with most parts available from Radio Shack. Dubbed the Tuna Tin 2, it got its name because the circuit board could be mounted on a metal tuna tin for a case. It uses two inductors and a transformer that were made by modifying chokes available from Radio Shack. The two transistors were the popular and inexpensive 2N2222A type. It included a round printed circuit board layout that would fit in a tuna tin. The total cost of new parts at the time, less the crystal and tuna tin, was about ten dollars. Over the years many of these units were built by hams. In the March 2000 issue of QST an updated article appeared that revised the design to use more commonly available parts such as making the coils using toroidal inductors. It also added a low pass filter to meet the latest FCC requirements for spurious emissions. The rest of the design was essentially unchanged and the new parts cost was estimated at $20. In 1976, I was a 15-year-old newly licensed ham radio operator, and a friend and I decided to build the Tuna Tin 2 described in QST. We etched our own printed circuit boards, bought and modified the Radio Shack coils, and used a combination of new and surplus parts from our junk boxes. I put mine in a nice but rather expensive metal case available from Radio Shack. At the time, I believe I did some testing of the assembled unit and determined that it oscillated but wasn't sure if it put out much power. I didn't have suitable test equipment to evaluate it and set it aside. I continued to rely on my main rig, a Heathkit DX60B transmitter that put out about 90 watts of CW. Flash forward 35 years and I still had the rig sitting in a pile of junk equipment and parts. A few connectors have been scavenged from it over the years. Thanks to the internet I was able to find the original QST article and the March 2000 update. I dug out, dug out my old board, cleaned it up, and added back some missing parts. I fired it up and it worked. I got about 120 milliwatts output, a little on the low side, but not bad. Some of the parts may have drifted in value over the years. I still had and used the single 7.055 MHz crystal I used with it originally. Rather than replace any parts, I decided to leave it as it was. For some reason, the PCB layout for my design does not quite match the one in QST. I don't know why. My friend and I may have made some changes to it back in 1976. Certainly it was modified to fit in a square rather than round case. Here is my unit in its case. There are front panel connectors for power and the code key. On the back is an RCA jack for the antenna output and power. Originally I planned to power it from a 9 volt battery. And here's a look inside. The PCB was masked and etched by hand. Many of the parts were scavenged from old radios and televisions that are rescued from the trash. Rex Harper, W1REX, runs QRPMe.com and offers a number of fun QRP related kits. One of them is his version of the Tuna Tin 2 called the 210 Tunas 2. The kit includes all parts for a slightly modified version of the original design including two crystals, connectors for power, antenna and code key, and even an empty Tuna Tim and label. The kit comes with all parts sealed inside the tin. There are no toroidal inductors to wind, it uses fixed inductors, as well as the two transistors it uses a third for keying and has an LED to indicate when it's transmitting. When I heard about this kit I had to order one. Here's the one I built. I measured from 99 milliwatts to 225 milliwatts output depending on the setting of the drive control when powered with a 12 volt power supply. 
To be honest, I haven't yet tried to make a contact with this rig, but plan to soon. The cost of the kit is currently $30 US. We've been talking about transmitters, but you also need a receiver for a complete station. The original Tuna Tin 2 article hinted at a matching receiver, but it never materialized. QRPME.com does sell the ideal companion receiver, based on the sudden receiver design by the Reverend George Dobbs G3RJV. QRPME.com's Sudden Storm 2 is a simple direct conversion receiver that's built onto the included tuna tin. It's crystal controlled and comes with some crystals. It supports some tuning control around the crystal frequency. You can operate it on different bands by plugging in different inductors and resistor modules in a socket. Here is my Sunstorm 2 that I assembled. I also bought the Texas Topper, another kit that provides a TR switch and boots the output from the two tin tuna to as much as 5 watts. This is my unit. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you are a fellow ham, watch for me on the 40 meter CW band maybe using some of the rigs shown here.